Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition uh, Black Belt Podcast, where we break down the latest and uh, greatest research for you in, in under 10 minutes. Uh, very honored to have, uh, I guess, today, uh, Dr. Guillermo Telez, otherwise known as, as Memo, who is a research professor at the University of Arkansas, who uh, I had the opportunity to work with uh, for many years um, as, I, as I first started uh, my career there. Uh, Memo, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you've been at Arkansas and, and, and um, kind of how you got to where you are today? Uh, yes, thank you, Sam. Um, well, it's, uh, it's um, an interesting story. I, uh, I worked for 16 years at the National Autonomous University of Mexico the, at the College of Veterinary Medicine. And, and um, in 2001, Billy, Dr. Billy Harvey's moved from A&M uh, to uh, take the position as director of the poultry head laboratory. And at that time, he called me just to um, give me the news that he was, he moved from a and to Arkansas. And it was funny because at the same time, I took my sabbatic in Mexico and he said, great, why don't you come uh, join join me? And, and I said, I can't believe it. I have too many students here. He said, come on, go for three months. Um, that's where I told my wife. Little did we know that it was going to be one-way ticket. To make a long story short, he offered me to stay. And since uh, late 2001, we we stay here. It was a very difficult tough decision, as as you you know you you've been there too. Right. But uh, professional, uh, personal, familiar, from all point of view, uh, it was the best decision. And uh, we've been there here for over 20 two years and uh, I'm very happy to be here. Memo, you work a lot in uh, intestinal health uh, from a lot of different angles. Um, you know, what do you what do you want to talk about today, uh, specifically in some of the research that you've, you've been working on uh, in the last couple of years? Right, Sam. Well, actually, yeah, without without a question, the, the, the gastrointestinal tract of animals in general, it doesn't Regardless of uh, if they're vertebrates or invertebrates, marine or terrestrial, every single animal that contains um, or have a digestive tract, it's um, we are all um, we have all animals follow through millions of years of evolution a remarkable um, synergy with with. Um, the microbiome that inhabits the um, the gastrointestinal tract of the animals. Most of the times, with it's just like a mother that is uh, has a, a pregnant woman. Normally, they they we think they they say that person that woman eats for two for herself and the baby, the fetus, but. A similar analogy can be said for all animals. We animals are eating not only for ourselves, but also for the microbiome. In other words, and this is this is even more remarkable because we're talking about we need to feed trillions of bacteria. Um, animals, we animals are only composed by 10% of cells, 90% of animals. Again, it doesn't matter if it's a shrimp or a bee or a human. Ninety percent of what is in the genome or the number of cells, living cells, is bacteria. And we're just talking about the microbiome in the gastrointestinal tract. We're not talking about bacteria that are in the microbiomes of the gastro, of the respiratory tract, or the genital genitary, genitary tract, or the uh, any other mucosa. So. It's a uh, when we when we look at this, all animals we have evolved, and our biology uh, it's complemented by by these bacteria, these fragile bacteria. Uh, sometimes I think who who is hosting whom? Are we uh, are we hosting them or they are hosting us? Uh, just in terms of this one to ten uh, proportion, not only in numbers, but in genes, because it's been estimated that the the genome of the microbiome is 300,000 genes versus 23 or 25,000 
genes of a fly or a human, well, there you go, that, that's that, that proportion. So whatever we eat to ourselves or our animals is going to impact what kind of bacteria we have in the in the yi tract and 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 this is so fragile because when when this ecosystem it's in, in it's called eubiosis and they are in perfect harmony everything was fine but they they these bacteria that are living in the gastrointestinal tract not only regulates the biology the physiology of the gastrointestinal tract it actually regulates and 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 dominates the behavior in, in a, through what is known as the uh, brain microbiome gut axis. There is a discommunication that is completely. I mean, we know now that uh, depression or autism um, and schizophrenia are. Diseases that are regulated by the type of bacteria that are living in our gastrointestinal tract and the, the, the stress, the different types of stress that the, or the ingredients of the diet that we eat or we gave to our animals is going to influence these bacteria. And when this is broken, we have what is known as dysbiosis. When there's this dysbiosis, everything is going to be a disaster because when you have this bacteriosis in the gastrointestinal tract, you're going to have inflammation. And if you have inflammation in, in the gut, which is the largest, I, I think this is one of the messages I want to give to the, to this podcast. The, the gastrointestinal tract is the largest immune organ of animals. 80% of the immune cells are located there. So, when we have inflammation in the gastrointestinal tract that can be produced by stress and, and stress, it's everything. I mean, not only talk about a virus or bacteria or coccidia, any biological aging fungi, we can talk about environmental uh, heat stress or ammonia or um, toxic stress, mycotoxins, um, um, poor quality nutrients in the diet or psychological. I mean, at the end of the day, of the day stress is going to cause an increase in um, what is known as oxidative stress. And when we have oxidative stress, we're going to have inflammation, which is going to be in the gas, in the gastrointestinal tract, uh, a tremendous impact in, in an organ that has so many immune cells, because then you're going to have what is known as leaky gut. So increased gut permeability. When you have increased permeability, then millions of antigens, bacteria, toxins are going to get into the blood, causing uh, systemic chronic inflammation. And this um, is what is, that's why 90% of all diseases, Metabolic diseases, neurological diseases, from Parkinson to Alzheimer to all the uh, all type of cancers, you name you name it, um, they are all ninety percent of all the diseases are linked with intestinal inflammation. And this is the reason. That's why any kind of stress that is going to have a repercussion, direct repercussion in the GI tract, is going to be. Um, Diabetes, metabolic diseases, um, autoimmune diseases, everything is linked to what is happening in the gut through affecting this mm, fragile microbial ecosystem that we have that is known as the microbiome. And and that's why we need to protect um, Sam. We humans have been feeding and treating and taking care of the wrong species. <laughs> Literally, we are for we forget that we humans are so arrogant, and we believe that uh, in reality we animals are a uh, super organisms. Just by thinking that uh, this proportion of ten to one cells, it's. Uh, it, 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 we need to reflect that uh, we need to give fiber. 
thirty uh, percent of what we eat goes to our microbiome. We are feeding these bacteria, and if we give them a good nutrient, which they love the fiber, and we don't, we are not eating enough fiber, or or or, or these. The, 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 the effects of what is known the Western obesogenic diet, uh, which is linked with an excess consumption of sugar and refined flour, when you're going to have a low fiber, that's when things, bad things are going to happen. You're going to shift this microbial population and, and you have all this, this uh, disease and problems. So, uh, the message uh, if there is something I can I can um, deliver in this podcast is we need to take care of the bacteria that are in our gut. If we take care good care of them, believe me and trust me, they're gonna take care good care of us. Ready for more sustainable poultry production? New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using Termin 8 supports entric health leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at www.anatox.com. Larry Memo, uh, thanks. Great to see you. Uh, very good talking. I'm sure we'll see each other uh, soon in, in Philadelphia, so I look forward to, to that. Thank you, um, Sam. It's always good to see you, and um, we miss you. You <laughs> have no idea how much we, we miss you, and uh, our work. It's so lucky to have you out there. I appreciate that, Memo. Miss, miss being up there too, for sure. Hey, everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it, or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.